Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephanie Bishke, and I am the event specialist at the Rutgers University Alumni Association. I thank you all for being with us today and hope that you're healthy and safe. Today, I'm pleased to welcome you to Creating and Maintaining a Year-Round Potted Succulent Garden with Rutgers Garden. If you have any questions for our presenters, please submit them in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. We will do our best to accommodate as many questions as possible. It's now my pleasure to turn it over to Monica and Stacey. That's what I Hello, are you ready to succulent with us? Thanks for being here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Monica. And I'm Stacy. We are both Rutgers graduates. I am Cook College of 05. And I'm Febs of 2018. And we have both ended up becoming horticulturists here at the Rutgers Gardens. Right now, we are coming to you live from inside of the air-conditioned Holly House on this hot summer day. Very hot. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is take you through the succulents. We brought a little assortment of our huge collection. So, we're going to first discuss some of the succulents. Then, we're going to go on to potting them up and you can join us along with making some examples of like also covered so if you'd like to be seated i don't know the two of us are so excited <laughs> we can hardly sit down um but if you'd like to be seated get comfortable we'll cover some of the succulents let's first start with the word succulent, what does it mean? Can I see, can someone raise their hand? Tell me what succulent means? Nobody? Stacy? <laughs> no, it's succulent is actually a plant that stores water in its leaves, which is great because they grow in very dry climates. So um, it protects them against drought. Great quality. Awesome. Let's see. So stores water in its leaves, but then that begs me to ask, how about these guys? They so, don't have leaves. So these guys are actually cactus and their spines are actually just modified leaves. It helps them against transpiration, gives them a little bit of shade, helps them from predators, and it makes them look oh. really, really cool. I could definitely <laughs> tell it's helping them with predators. <laughs> Like you have a close up of those. We have that one that is being shown now. It is commonly called corn cob and it's a euphorbia. And here we have a mammalaria called copper king. Very cool because all of its spines are copper in color, giving it a whole aura of copper. Now, since you mentioned the whole adaptation from leaf to thorn, I think this guy, Persica acurata, aculeata, is a perfect plant to show us such adaptation. Yes. What's different about this? So this has both spines and leaves. Yeah. Which makes it very unique. I don't know that you can see, but all along the stems here, it's actually all rosettes of thorns, but still have leaf. Now, the species name, the Puliata, actually means thorny. And it's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind with all plants. The stronger your Latin becomes, you'll discover that a lot of species names are actually telling you something about the plant. So, Latin is a huge benefit yes. to understanding plants. Um, let's see, well, what else do we have? We had showed you a couple of euphorbia. Now I want you to know that just because plants might be in the same genus doesn't necessarily mean they all look the same. These two, with leaves and thorns, a euphorbia. This one, very tiny leaf, no thorns, both euphorbia. 
be having a punt yet. This guy's just really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and despite the fact that it is covered in spines, the spines are very soft. The interesting thing about the euphorbia is, is that if you are allergic to latex, mm. you will be allergic to a milky sap that it secretes once you break a piece off. So if you ever get a euphorbia and you do have a latex allergy, I would say to look out for that. So I will break off a little piece and you can kind of see right there a little milky substance that it gives off. Make sure you don't rub that on your skin. I learned the hard way. It will give you a nasty burn. That's just a fun fact about you. <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We have Ripsalis. This is a really interesting succulent because while it stores moisture in its leaves, these are all Ripsalis. This one's commonly called mistletoe because it'll get flowers at the uh, tips of these and hang down much like mistletoe, but it is a tropical or subtropical lowland like forest plant, meaning it's it can take a lot more moisture and a lot less sun than most succulents. So just something interesting. This one is commonly called coral cactus because it looks a lot like the coral you would find under the sea. Uh, Echeverians or Echeveria, um, heard it pronounced both ways. This is a whole genus of plants that I think most people think of when they think of succulents. But as you can see, there's a lot more than just the Echeveria. Um, what people love about them though is that they look like flowers. They have rosettes, they come in different colors. We have this one called topsy-turvy. It's unique because while most leaves curve upward, as you can see, so curving up as in catching rain, topsy-turvy's leaves are actually curved on the downward. And the woolly rose is great because it has a little bit of to it. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful. Texture, color, height. These are all things you look at in a variety of succulents. Makes them fascinating because it's seemingly never endless the amount of color and forms they take on. Then we have an entire row here of talent poies, which you can see also have a very diverse um, form, even though the ones we happen to bring are mostly green, except for chocolate soldier here, or the tips, they're all furry. Now, Kalanchoe tomentosa, if you go back to what I was saying earlier about species names, tomentos, what does it mean? Furry. furry. <laughs> That's right. And they do have a felt like texture to them. Yep. This is called the panda plant, which mm -hmm. is very similar and uh, right. Felt mm -hmm. plant. Yep. Now, the ones that I bet Stacy could answer, and maybe you could too, if you're paying close attention to this, le this lesson. Um, hey, Tomentos means furry. Is this Kalanchoe species name Tomentos? because it is not furry. The paddle plant, exceedingly popular. I think a lot of people have become real familiar with it. The fantastic outdoor gets very large, multi rosettes. Um, and this section here, we have crashulas, which is a very large genus. We have commonly known as the jade plant. This is actually variegated. It's very very beautiful. A very special gene. One yes, in line. Yes, with we'll click the, the, with the variegation. We do have of jades. And this different. one is called Princess Pine, which I absolutely love. It has kind of like a pine to mm -hmm. it. Completely different. Now remember, these are all crashulas, but yet the look, the form, the color, 
completely different. And now this one would be more of, could be low spiller in a container called Calico Kitten. I mean, how cute is that? The names are also big. We are, that is a fan <laughs> favorite down here. We happen to have some resident cats at the garden. And anything with the name cat or kitten, that's a big winner. But on the end, I see <laughs> one of my favorites. So this is actually the propeller plan, which looks like a airplane. An airplane propeller. Falcata. It's Pratula Falcata. And if you hold it this way, you can see it absolutely looks like airplane propellers. So let this plant take you on a trip because it's clear no one else is going anywhere this year. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have some sedums. Um, we have many different kinds. Firestorm. This has a lot of color. This is something you would want to look for if you notice that a lot of your succulents have a green hue. This would brighten it up. Show you that there. Also great for an autumnal display of succulents. Just have to remember with this guy. I should say that. Most of the succulents we've decided to show on this table are not hardy. Yes. So these are not hardy succulents. These will have indoors when that frost arrives at your home. Another great one is Jelly Bean. Another great name. This is also has a lot of color. So if you're looking to add some red into your container, that would be a good option. And next is Haworthia, which is a really, really great house plant because it requires low light. So if you have an office space that doesn't have a lot of light or you don't have a window, there's many different types of Haworthia you can incorporate into your displays. And then we have some Senecios here, which would be great for a spiller in your container. This is Purple Flesh. Absolutely love this How one. How fantastic is this This has plant? really, really good color <laughs> and it is very unique. Coming from someone who, when I was very young, had a Jeep that I decided to paint plum crazy purple. <laughs> I'm pretty crazy about that, Cecilia. <laughs> Surprise. Right, so that. I see on one of the Hawaiians, oh. it has this antenna coming yes. out. So hopefully <laughs> everybody can see. I know it might be a little challenging, but this is actually the flower stem here. Now, Haworthias grow very low to the ground. So they shoot up this flower stem in hopes that they will be pollinated. Little flies, gnats are flying up above, and this is its only chance at pollination. So it's doing everything in its power to make sure it is not forgotten. And it has these beautiful little white flowers, and all Haworthia flower stems. I love that. I mean, a plant's will to to live and to reproduce. I mean, a plant's whole life cycle, the primary goal is to reproduce and produce offsets. So that Haworthy has given it everything it's got very hard, to yeah. pollinate and hence increase chances. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, well, we have a couple interesting aloes. You have your regular aloe vera, but then there's octopus aloe. Summertime, very appropriate to be showing the octopus aloe where the leaves come out. Still gelatinous in its leaf and can be used. For like that sunburn aloe you like it. That's right. <laughs> um, we have a little ionium Schwarzkopf. It's a really nice, dark, dark flower. Um, Schwarzkopf Ionium is super popular because of its look of a rose or a, a flat flower. They commonly call it desert rose. Yeah, we have a Portula caria, which they call elephant bush. And honestly, I'm not quite sure where the elephant bush common name came from. But if any of you know, and it is stunning, it's got the red stem. So while its leaf is green and has a slight variegation, that red stem is really very showy. Mm 
Now, I just wanted you to compare. These are both Ionium. So while we had Schwarzkopf, we also have Kiwi, a much larger flowering Ionium. But they will both grow rather upright and bonsai-like as the years come. Beautiful plants. And I actually forgot one over here also. This is the Dallas Burnham. Pickle cactus. And we chose this one to actually show you that succulents do have beautiful flowers. This one has a very small yellow flower. Very typical of a Dallas Burma flower. Looks like a daisy with very fine mm -hmm. petals, like almost frill like. But all of your succulents, if you're new to succulents, we're going to give you a lovely surprise. The majority of them flower in the winter time and in the greenhouses, they are stunning. Colors of red and coral, orange, yellow, white, and typically throw up those long flower stalks. So they're pretty showy flower, but it only happens once a year. So if you're looking for the type of succulent, oh, I found it. Let me step off screen one moment. If you're looking for a type of succulent that might flower all season long, then look no further than for vegetative variety. We also have seed varieties and the seeds do tend to come back. You know, I believe the flowers have closed because I brought it into this mm -hmm. lovely air conditioned room yeah. <laughs> where it's a little bit darker, but as soon as I bring it back into the greenhouse or outdoors, they will open back up. Um, so that is a great way to go. If you were looking for an outdoor display, that flowers all season. Otherwise, it is usually once a year. So let's see. Should maybe we should pick out some succulents yeah. and go ahead and start making a container. What do you guys think at home? Ready for that? Now, first of all, what you're gonna <laughs> need you know, assemble your supplies for what you're going to need to pot up a succulent container. You want to show them a couple of uh, yeah. different container options? So we have two different types right here. We have a terracotta pot that has a drainage hole. This is very, very important because your succulents do want optimal drainage. If they get wet feet, they may rot. But you can also use a container without a drainage hole. Usually we'll put some rocks at the bottom, just give it some space if water is sitting at the bottom there. Um, we have some pebbles, sand to dress, and this is our beautiful display that Monica <laughs> put together. I like to call it our cactus or succulent <laughs> charcuterie plate. <laughs> um, we have our perlite, our potting mix, and I guess this would be like almost an orchid bark mix that you can find. Oh, it definitely is. I can yep. even show you the bag. <laughs> this is great for drainage as well as the perlite. This will add some air space in your soil. Just wanted to say that I was looking for just bark chips. And while I couldn't find that, and at some of the nurseries or big box stores that you've been going to, gardening has become so popular this year. It is really hard to find supplies at your local level, but an orchid potting mix will do because it is primarily the bark chip. So it's used for growing epiphytic plants, which I should also mention that the Rixalis, some of them are epiphytic. Now, what does epiphytic mean? Yeah, uh, doesn't necessarily need to have its root mass in the ground to grow. It can grow off trees, so let's say in a tropical forest, mm -hmm. we would have peaty, um, poor lining the bark of trees. Well, that has enough moisture and enough drainage in it to keep the rip salis going. So epiphytes also like bromeliads, things of that nature. But yeah, these three components would make an excellent mix. If you can find, um, bagged potting mix for cactus specifically, a general potting mix, some bark, and perlite, all used for drainage. Perlite is the stuff you see in potting mix. 
So all of the white is perlite and the brown is peat moss. The peat moss holds the moisture while the perlite adds the airspace and drainage that roots, it's essential for roots to not rot. The only thing, why can't you just use potting mix? Because there's not quite enough perlite or drainage. So a half and half, or if you're gonna go ahead with the pork chips as well, I would just do a third, a third, and a third. You're gonna mix all of that up. It's gonna give you excellent drainage. Drainage, drainage, drainage. Have we mentioned that enough? Because <laughs> it is pretty crucial in yeah. growing succulents. And I just wanted to say that while we discussed that you can use pots that don't have a drainage mm -hmm. hole, typically best use indoors just because we can't control the weather. And if we could, we wouldn't be having two weeks of plus 90 degree temperatures. Um, you never know when it's going to decide to rain for two straight weeks. And in that event, a container with no drainage and you're getting constant rain like we did that one day last week. We all need that. Several inches. <laughs> yeah. It will flood out and uh, and root rot. Right. Yeah. right. So succulents do rebound nicely, which is a plus. If you happen to a root root rot and completely killed the roots, taking a top piece off is another thing making them really popular. Taking that top piece off and rerooting it again into a nice, well aerated mix. You can have roots on a brand new plant in no time. You could even take the leaf. Just snip one of these off here. They come yep. off really easily, a simple twist, and there is your new plant. They come off unintentionally all the Lay time right there. for us. And that's all you would have to do. And in no time, you start seeing that little leaf. The callus is over. It'll throw out an aerial root. It'll secure in. And you see a small plant leg. Actually, I think yeah. we have. Huh. don't know that you'd be able to see that really well. flying off everywhere. But they the leaves have just come off in this. I'm actually going to go so far as to dig my finger in there. And they are very cute. And show you. That started with a leaf. And now has a root and is throwing up a plant. There's one dangling off next to it. So it is really that easy to start them. Maybe we'd like to select some things now. I'm sure you've gathered all your supplies. And we'll go ahead and cut some up. Now, I'm going to be working with a beautiful terracotta pot that has a drainage hole. The only thing I'm going to do to start that off, you have choices. I can either go with a larger pebble stone, and just throwing a little bit right over that drainage hole. Now, do you know why you, this is not necessarily just succulents, but it's also plants in general when you're potting plants, often the drainage hole at the bottom of your pot, you can have something that size, it's very large. The reason they have you putting in gravel or you know any sort of coarse material is to block the hole just enough so that you still have drainage. You don't want it completely. So it should be um, an aggregate of some sort so that it's not just laying on top of the hole, blocking it completely. But it's enough to block it so that early on, before the rooting happens, that all of your soil doesn't fall out of that hole. Now, I've gone ahead with that. Let's see. Oh, you're a little beauty. I love this. Purple, purple pearl, Echeveria. I'm going to take him. You know why I wouldn't take this side? Yes. Can you guess why I wouldn't take this side? The different order, life requirements. Exactly. So you do. You want to select items that are going to have the same requirements of light and water. 
Yeah. Choice. I know. I like the green. I like his flower stalks coming out. We've got a rosette. Maybe something low. I just go with the elephant bush. That could be a nice ensemble. So, we will take this one actually a little bit earlier. A little more. I am just going to take the finest amount of my already mixed, if I can wink, I'd give you a wink, um, <laughs> of my already mixed peat bark and potting mix just to line the bottom, barely. Now, one thing you'll notice, my pots are larger, taller than my pot. It's not necessarily a problem with succulents because they have very shallow root systems. You can simply tease the roots. Remove that. Tease the roots until you get it so that it's laying at no greater height, the soil level is at no greater height than your pot. Otherwise, if you tend to mound things up when you do go to water, which yes, some things do need water in the growing season. They actually like a little bit regular water, and they like a little bit regular fertilizer during the growing season, which is May through September. Um, so, going back to that though, if I were to mound it up, well, the soil is going to be spilling out, my water is going to be spilling out, just wouldn't be good. So, taking these down to a height, oh, this is good because this is a newly rooted one, which is perfect for me because its roots haven't gone all the way to the bottom. Thank you, and it picks up nicely, it's kind of showing off that Oh, did you see what just happened? Lost a leaf. <laughs> Save that leaf. Don't read it up. And while you're planting, it reminds me of something that when um, I was an intern, you told us it was plant it low, sure to go. Oh. Plant it high, never die. Oh. Um, planting it low can lead to rot. And that's something that we commonly see throughout the gardens. People, you know, sometimes mistakenly plant too low. We think we can handle it. But, uh, yeah. If you plant your plants and suffocate the very important crown of any plant, this is succulents, this is a tree, if that is not level or just slightly higher than the natural soil you're potting it into, you're going to run into issues. So, yes, I'm glad you reminded me if you plant it low. Sure to go, plant it high, never die. Now, saying that also, you don't want to see five inches of root mass yes, above the soil. <laughs> that takes it to a whole new level. Now, you know, I would love a little piece, just a little piece of something low. I'm going to do a little guy. Hmm. How are you guys doing at home? Are you potting? Are you fumbling? Are things going awry? I like oh. this. And what we can do, let's see, I bet there's more than enough in here. I know this is scary looking. <laughs> oh, actually, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm literally ripping the plant apart. <laughs> So, they're very resilient and it's because it's thrown roots in all along the pot. So what may have started as one single stem, as it grew, it started throwing aerial roots. I don't know that you can get a close up. Can you see the aerial root that my pinky is pointing to right now? That, when it's laying, is its way also of spreading, of growing, throwing its own roots off. Now, I just wanted this little guy to get shoved right in there. So I've got a little something tall. I've got some nice fillers. 
and I've got some things that are going to spread over the edge. Now, you can see that my container is pretty tight with plants, so I don't have a whole lot of room for the extra soil, which is just fine. Because the reality is, if you have too much space in there and you're finding yourself putting in heaping handfuls and cupfuls, more than likely, you've gone and up potted it into a little bit too large of a container. Succulents do like it tight, they like the drainage. And I am just filling in along the edges. So I suppose I could even use a little bit of the soil that I tickled off. How are you making out there, Stacy? I am figuring out my color scheme over here, which is very important to me. Color is important to both of you. It's a colorful life we're living. It is. Already, yeah. I'm prepping it up back here. Also, if you notice, I'm turning, and as I'm turning, I'm not only filling in my soil, but I am also looking to what we call face the plants. You want the plants best face facing outward or in a direction that it will be viewed. Nice. So this right here, I could turn it, but instead I think I'm going to put it up along the wall. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. looking beautiful. I love the blues and greens yeah. and tones. Always consider your container, too, when you're thinking about it. Now, the reason we had the river pebbles, this is like a really a much finer grit. It's not quite sand. And this is really stone grit. This is one of my favorites. So what you're going to do is you're just going to top dress the soil with it. And why are we doing this? Well, aside for its very clean appearance, it helps reduce on algae that can build on your top soil, fungus nets. Which, especially if it's an indoor plant, you, you know, that is a common pest that you might come in contact with. And it also gives a little bit of illusion of deserty, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of appropriate, you know. You've got succulents, even though some of them are from the tropics and not necessarily sand laden. You can even purchase a little miniature something and put it in there. Oh, yeah, you got to have fun with it. Yeah. You got to really have a whole story where you are. You know, I have to admit, someone knew I was uh, going to be participating in this today. So they decided to send me a text and tell me that uh, a Martha Stewart happened to have a special on succulents today. So it's obviously a pretty hot topic. Yes, succulents <laughs> are in. And there are many ways to can destroy it. And it is a good thing. Yep. So, certainly got that. Succulents are delicious. So, this is what I'm looking at. Now, if you've gotten a little bit of soil on top of your succulent, your broader leaves, that's okay, it's fine, because you're still going to water it in. Like I said, a lot of people feel that succulents never need water. It's not the case. In the growing season, I like to keep our succulents watered once a week, and you wanna give it a thorough water, let it dry out in between. I'm saying once a week, but I suppose if it's a really small or weakly rooted succulent, it may need it less. So do keep an eye out for the container drying out. And if your container, you stick your finger in and you mm -hmm. feel that soil is still dry, half inch to an inch down, it's time. Um, they also like fertilizer. 
You can use a, a general purpose feed on them once a month diluted, and you're going to get the most out of your succulent. One thing that drives me a little crazy is that people feel succulents can live in complete neglect. Mm. While they can, you're not getting their utmost, you know, their showiest, mm -hmm. their most beautiful, the most bigger. They most likely won't flower. They won't put on a lot of growth. Right. So. I mean, will they stay alive? Yeah. Yes. They'll look alive. But <laughs> don't you want more than that? <laughs> you want to give it everything you've got. Oh, that's pretty. So yeah, this so, is using a little bit of the finer. So I'm dressing this. So I chose the colors that I did because I just wanted to mention that um, a lot of succulents can be monochromatic in color. So mostly greens you'll see when you're shopping. And that is just what it is. Um, if you if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have a lot of color, you can play off of textures and shapes. So here, um, I usually use complementary colors, like when we're out in the gardens, making containers, but I would say the blues and the oranges might be a little challenging for succulents. So you can go with your reds and greens. Complementary colors are a great thing for the eye. So I'm just dressing this and I didn't show you before, but you can put the stones in the bottom of this container. It will help with drainage. But what I really like to do with these is sometimes I use a little bit bigger is place them on the top in little clusters like this. Gives it like a little deserty look. Um, and you can play around with that. You can get I use larger stones and kind of place them around and i'm going to go to this side oh i have a leaflet that fell off that'll be later that'll be next year's plan. yep now while she's talking about this and she was talking about desert just know that when you get a succulent one of the first things i'd recommend go ahead and research it look at where it is needed to because that's going to tell you a whole lot about it's best growing yeah. conditions. Some may be native to desert-like conditions where it takes dry, it takes full sun, while others are more tropical or um, low-lying plants. Edge rip silas, I actually saw growing right on the water's edge in like a mangrove. Ooh, this is rough. In the mangrove pond, so down in Florida. Yep. Um, and it's it's a wonderful thing when you see the plant in its native environment tells you so much about what its needs are don't treat them all the same they're not all the same and while people think oh succulent put it in full full sun not all of them like that mm -hmm. you may not be so pleased if you have them all in full full sun so you can see just texture shape i mean it is a lot of green hues, I would say not as much color, but, you know, a variety of shapes. We have um, Kalanchoe here. We have the jelly bean sedum. So you can play around with what you have. Don't feel limited if you go somewhere and you see that they don't have a large selection because you can work with pretty much whatever you have. And it will fill in and take its shape of its own. Um, you know, you are limited based on the size of your container. So this is more elongated where Monica has more room to work with in terms of the thrill, fill, spill. So this you're just looking for thrill and fill. <laughs> uh, you could put a spill in there, but, um, you know, you're limited with space. You don't want to. Um, Stacy mentioned looking for succulents. So in addition to the Rutgers Gardens, selling succulents. Um, in addition to those huge box stores that people so regularly go to, go to your local garden centers. Local garden centers, first of all, they need your support. Yes. And second of all, usually have a really nice array of succulents. Maybe a little bit healthier also. <laughs> and maybe a little bit healthier. Um, while she's finishing that up, I wanted to show you some options for outdoor displays. So, here at the garden for years, if any of you have come to the 
gardens, um, we had our succulents displayed in these chimney flues. They are just clay chimney flues, ideal for succulents because they're <laughs> hollow. <laughs> also, the clay helps to pull moisture from the soil, which is key. I can't remember, I believe Stacy mentioned that as far as pots go, but clay will literally pull moisture from the soil. So, an array of chimney flues, which you can get at hardware stores or at least order online from hardware stores. So, set up a lovely display, come in various different heights and widths. As long as they're on level ground, you're good because, like you know, they're hollow. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say about that? Well, <laughs> what's in here is we have some Kalanchoe, like you can really play with shapes and sizes in this. We didn't really touch on aloe as much. Um, this is a marginata. This is a silver squill, silica, and then an echeveria. Silver squill, if you do have cats, I would recommend not putting that near your animals because it is very toxic. And I found out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, right. and I'm going to give it to Monica here. We have something that we have used in Rutgers Gardens before as our succulent display. In more recent years, for like yep. the last, I don't know, maybe four years, we went with the more industrial cinder block look and we created big walls of cinder blocks, um, which is really neat. We happen to have lots on hand, so if we were doing any construction at home or easily come upon cinder blocks, <laughs> Thank goodness for our student intern program. Um, but you can award, you can have different arrangements all the time. And if you'd like to do something with more party, what I chose here to stick in these was hardier succulents. Now I'm going to be honest and say that typically in our succulent garden here at the gardens, at the Rutgers Garden. We take our succulents in, except for New Puntia, which is very hardy in New Jersey, and Blue Spruce But we do dig the rest in. I've never tried growing succulents and overwintered them in containers outdoors. I, I fully encourage you to give it a try. Do keep it close to the house because your homes radiate heat. So not only is it providing winter wind from, for protection, but a home literally radiates some heat. So the closer you put a marginally hardy plant to the house, the more likely you'll have success. Now, I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. When you do big cinder moss, you can you have holes. You have holes that literally the plants would fall right through. So what do we do? What we were doing with our Bended holes in the cinder blocks are either hanging basket liners or this is just a pot upside down. Jammed it right in that hole, fill the rest of it with your potting mix, and then go ahead and plant. Again, the porch lock would be lovely in there because it'll give you a flowering all season long. We also have, let me show you. So the hanging basket liners, a lot of times when you buy a hanging basket, which I'm sure you've purchased from us at the Spring Flower Fair, uh, <laughs> came with these liners in them. And you're just looking to make it tight because remember, not only does whatever you're using in here still needs to have drainage, remember that. Um, so like a pot has holes so that it, you know the water can escape but it also needs to hold your plant and your soil. So it's gotta be really tight in there. And that's what we're always focusing on when one of the holes is suspended, but it offers huge variety. I also just recently thought about when we were talking about our clay flues, PVC pipe is really easy to come by at plumbing supplies. You can certainly spray paint them different colors and how cool that would look for an outdoor display as well. Um, we even, we happen to have all of these on hand. <laughs> Something like that, pop that in there. You could certainly change the color. 
Um, these little plants off to the side here are hardy succulents. Hens and chicks, we have both red, red beauty, hasn't colored up yet, and we have cobweb, which I love the cobweb one. But, and we also, I forgot to mention the yucca. Yucca sapphire skies becomes this very tall palm tropical looking and happens to be hardy. So now that we're talking about care a little bit, let's swing it back over to Stacy. Talk about some of the care they need. All right, so this is like our care cart. <laughs> um, and on here we have a few different succulents that are experiencing some pests, which you might um, experience also. On one of these, we have something called mealybug. So if you can get close in on that, these are usually soft bodied um, pests that suck the nutrients out of the plant and they kind of live in the crevices, um, which we experience a lot. They're more of a greenhouse pest. Uh, we have aphids, spider mites. That little black stuff that I noticed on oh, these couple. The soot, yeah. The soot and it's sooty mold. A lot yeah. of times, if you had aphids, you may have not notice them because they're difficult to spot. But what you're going to start noticing is like a black sticky film that's sooty mold. That's a sign that you have insects, you have aphids, and it's time to do something. So we would recommend using a spray of alcohol, which you can put a few drops into of Dawn into a spray bottle. Mix that up. Um, I would definitely recommend only using 70%. If you use anything higher for rubbing alcohol like 90, it will burn the plants and you will know automatically. Um, so while 90 will burn it, 30 may be too low to kill it. Yep. You can also, this is something we do regularly. Yes. So if you don't have lots of plants that need spraying and you just have one that you need care for, a Q-tip and some alcohol, so if you don't want to spray, if it's not totally infested, um, you just see a few little bugs, you can just shove your Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol, find exactly where the pest is, just gently rub it off, try not to break any of the leaflets off, and just repeat that until you see that the plant clears up. I mean, pests happen, it's not the end of the world, we all experience it, um, but for general care, um, we have a plan here that shows a really good example of etiolation, etiolation which is one of our favorite that. words <laughs> so this is monica's plant which she saved from the greenhouse from the right garbage. from the garbage <laughs> um and you can see that at one point it was getting a lot of light because the nodes are very close together and then at some point probably living inside of the garbage can it was not um so the nodes are very far apart it's reaching for the light it's saying please move me into more light and Monica said, okay, sure, no problem. And you could see that the nodes begin to move um, our grub more close right, yeah. together. So this is something that I think a lot of people experience because you're putting it into an office space that might not have a lot of light. Right, so um, if you notice plants reaching for the light, etiolation where the internode is getting much longer, that is your plant discussing with you, it needs more light, go toward the light. <laughs> All right. At the same time, we have the low light, but I should also quickly mention that there's highlight situations that your plant will tell you about, and that is if it starts to become it's a green plant that has started to become purple, red, pink in color, that is sometimes a sign that it's either too much light or too much water. So look for that purplish pink when it was the green plant to begin with, too much light and too much water. So, any more questions? Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Hi, thank you so much. We <laughs> definitely have quite a few questions. Um, I would say the top question is regarding how large succulent plants can get. Is it better to trim them back or should they be repotted in a larger container? And if they should be repotted, how will you know when it's time? Hmm. All right. Great questions. Yep. Very, yep. Um, how big can they get? Well, again, going back to a tip I gave you a while ago, whenever you get a succulent, look it up. 
look it up, look at the growing situation, look at the height, look at um, where it's native to. So it tells you so much as far as growing, um, as far as whether to cut it back or mm -hmm. to let it mm -hmm. get potted up, it's really up to you. And it's actually why I had brought in that other plant that I was showing you the teapot mm -hmm. that uh, this plant has been a little teapot, very sweet. It was from a shower um, years ago. See how it's getting so leggy? So even though it's not very large, it's very leggy. I have already cut it back once and literally just taking all of them, giving it a cut back, putting it on top, gives it a whole new life. So it's what you're interested in. And it will flush back. I mean, don't oh, be afraid to cut back it back. I think that's a fear that people have. Um, as for potting up, I would say no more than one inch when you're repotting. So if you put it in too big of a pot, it will most likely rot. That's another issue mm -hmm. we see. So go small, gradually up pot. Right. And that's don't just shove it into a huge, massive pot. And our motto with succulents, go small or go home. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Another popular question we've had is what do you guys think is the best potting mix to use for your indoor succulent garden? Honestly, I really feel like mm -hmm. making your own mm -hmm. mix, like we were showing you the charcuterie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the charcuterie play. Um, this way you can control exactly what you're putting in. Right. Um, it also depends on the plant. Like the Ripsalis may need more water, you know, requirements. So to go lighter on yeah. the perlite or the bark, um, whereas another succulent needs to be drier. So no. perlite, bark, and a general potting mix in equal proportions. And this very is all nice sold and, and you can make it yourself. It's very easy. I, I would also recommend. I mean, if you're becoming a, a collector or, you know, as have aspirations to become a collector, you're definitely going to want to start making your own potting mix. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, this is a question we have from Sylvia and actually a few others. Is it okay to leave your succulents outside during heavy rains or is it better to bring them inside? And also in the winter months, do you recommend using grow light? No, if you have the opportunity to use grow lights, then by all means, because a lot of times winter light will give you some mediation. I don't imagine that most homes have the amount of light mm -hmm. that our greenhouses can supply. So a grow light, by all means, if you can do it, yes. Um, does it absolutely need it? No, but you're gonna have to play around with the light situations in your home closest to a window, south facing, southeast facing, um, definitely not a northwest corner. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do it. Um, and as far rain. as the rain, the rain, the drainage is your biggest right. question. It, does the pot have a drainage hole? Mm -hmm. um, or what how is the large mix? is the pot? Mm -hmm. But rainwater has a certain amount of nutrients that plants really do like, um, as opposed to hard tap water. So the rainwater itself is good, and as long as you have the drainage. Leave it out. Mm -hmm. Why make your life harder? It doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're on mute. Sorry, Stephanie. Yeah. We can hear you. Did Sorry. you have more questions? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <It's okay. laughs> um, this is a question we have from Mike. How closely spaced can succulents be planted in a container? I see many in stores that appear to be packed. Is that healthy? What are the considerations for the growth of the plant when they are packed that closely together? You saw that I packed yeah. mine pretty tight. <laughs> and for, for one season, that's fine. Um, that's gonna be plenty of space for those plants for one growing season. And eventually you'll need to up pot and mm -hmm. You could just take the entire collection and put it into one to two inch larger. And you can redesign it the next year. Um, if they, you know, each year you can do a different design. There's no limit to 
what you can do with the succulents. Only limit is your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we have one more question here. Time for one more. And that's, do you have any advice? For when you're bringing succulents home from the store on how you can prevent pests from coming in with them. Oh, you check, check, yeah. check, check, check. You really check the plant. Yeah. Thorough in checking the plant. Also, um, a lot of times insects can be soil borne. So that gets tricky. A lot of times when you're bringing plants up from more tropical areas from the East coast that. There is mealy scale mm -hmm. living in the soil. So a lot of people have recommended trying to remove a lot of that soil and mm -hmm. repotting it into a nice, fresh, sterile mix. You could do that. You could leave it outdoors so mm -hmm. long as it's not the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you can leave it outdoors a couple of days and just monitor to see if anything's happening because if there's eggs in the soil, or pests living in the soil, they'll show themselves. And I always recommend keeping that plant away from your already established plants inside. If it does have something on it, it's you know, then that right. way you can quarantine it and it'll then your plants going into quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. we know about that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's great advice. Well, on behalf of the Rutgers University Alumni Association, I want to thank you, Monica and Cece, for hosting this great webinar. I know um, I definitely appreciate the feedback because I'm trying to get my little succulent garden go growing here in quarantine. Uh, everyone uh, on this webinar will be receiving a follow up email from the RUAA, which will provide you with further information about the Rutgers gardens. Thank you again for attending this webinar tonight, and I hope you'll join us for future alumni events. Have a great day, everyone. Wait, there's one more. And oh, here's the one the more thing. I think mean, you've all the room for heroes. You Yay! are now a succulent superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>